because I'm not a math expert on Kalman filters, um, I am going to uh, give a little more hand wavy expert on this. Uh, sorry, hand wavy explanation of this. Um, the notebook's here. It has all the math in it. You can feel free to go through and like learn about uh, state transition matrices and all of that fun stuff. The, the main point here is that we've uh, released an algorithm showing a basic implementation of this. Um, and the hope is that you guys can start replacing some of your moving averages with Kalman filters, which is a fairly easy case. But you know, if you wanted to do anything more complicated than moving average, you have to actually like um, go through some some math and linear algebra. So you know, it's I would definitely recommend it if you have that skill set because these things are great. But I understand that they're not for everyone. So um, what is a Kalman filter? Well, Kalman filters are basically a way of saying I have a data stream um, and it's noisy, and I want to know what like the true underlying state is. And they're kind of a, a Bayesian analysis because they take new data in and they say, okay, I have a belief about the state of the world, okay? And then I am going to look at the new data point that came in. Does it contradict my belief? If yes, then I say I'm less certain of my, my belief and I slightly adjust my belief. If it supports my belief of the world, I say I am more certain of my belief and I don't adjust my belief. So these things are like dynamically updating uh, processes that actually kind of mathematically optimize the process of a moving average, where now you don't have to worry about adjusting window length and saying how sensitive should it be. A Kalman filter will tell you that. It will basically do that work for you, um, and it will give you an optimal uh, uh, a reading of the position. Now, these things are useful when you already have a model of what the underlying state should be. So moving average is a simple one. You're saying that tomorrow is going to be the same as today, which is basically modeling something with a random walk. Tomorrow is the same as today plus some noise. Uh, and that works pretty well for moving average situations when you're trying to like model a price with a moving average. Um, if you're trying to do something more complex like a beta estimation, you actually have to adjust the transition matrix and the state matrix and all that kind of stuff. So it can get a little a little hairy and I'm not gonna focus on that example. But again, um, for those of you who are comfortable doing that, I think this is a really good way to, uh, to, to remove a potential overfitting and just make your algorithms more uh, Bulletproof. These are used. Kalman filters are used a ton in uh, like um, in aircraft applications, like determining velocity of, of jets. You have like velocity signals coming out of a radar station. What's the actual velocity? Because there's some noise because you know the air is turbulent and blah blah. blah. So they, they're used in situations where you really have to have like a 100% knowledge of what's going on, which is I think why they can be so useful in finance. So. Here's an example of a, a falling ball, and we're filming the falling ball, and we want to know where the falling ball actually is. So we have knowledge of how the falling ball should behave. We have this formula. So that means we can use a Kalman filter, right? We can say, I, I have an existing model for how this thing should behave. Um, I'm getting data points in from my noisy measurement process. Uh, what's actually going on? So you can see here, this green is the camera data. This red is like the actual flight path of the ball, which we know because it's a simulated example. And then the blue is the Kalman filter estimate. And you can see here, it starts fairly far away because it, the, the starting point is wrong. We gave it a wrong starting point. But as we get more data, it starts realizing, hmm, this, even though the data is noisy, it starts realizing this, this, I need to be way further lower. And then uh, basically at this point in the process, it's basically locked on to um, the actual position of the falling ball. And you can see it kind of follows it nicely down for the rest of the process, even with that noisy data. Uh, and so this is what you kind of want to model when you're, when you're estimating quantities in your algorithm. You have some noisy estimate that has some, some variance, and then you want your Kalman filter to do all the work for you of saying, uh, okay, well, given that it's so noisy, I'm just not going to be very certain. Because the nice thing is that on every step, the Kalman filter gives you an estimate, but it also gives you a confidence interval around that estimate. So it says, I'm estimating that the sharp ratio is this, but I'm not very confident in that. You know, my standard deviation is high. And then you, it, it does all of that work for you that I was talking about in the instability notebook. So um, let's, let's go ahead and, and uh, I'm gonna skip through this again because this is just showing you some more like grainy details of how it's working. Um, but I wanna show you the example of a moving average. Uh, and, uh, Again, this is like comparing a Kalman filter to the moving average uh, method of before. So um, we just used a Kalman filter here to estimate a moving average. 
Uh, and you can see here that the blue is the Kalman estimate. Again, same behavior of starting out wrong because you don't know what the true state is, and then very quickly snapping to uh, 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 the data set. Um, and these are some other moving averages of a 30, 60, and 90 day moving average. And so you might look at this, these 30, 60, 90, say again, like, which do I use? Do I have to do some parameter optimization? Uh, well, just use a Kalman filter. And you can see here, I've just zoomed in. Um, it might be a little tricky to see, but this blue line is the Kalman filter. Uh, and you can see it's basically doing all this work. It's saying, how laggy or responsive should I be at any given point in time? It, it, it's going to mathematically optimize that for you, uh, whereas the moving average is fixed. It, it, it can't, it's, it's, you fix it to a responsiveness, and then you have to kind of choose one. So it's just, it's not, it's not as good as a Kalman filter at this job. Um, and then the cool example here. Uh, is uh, linear regression. Um, and linear regression uh, is a little more complicated because you actually have to, um, again, like I said, like regenerate the transition states of the Kalman filter so that it understands that the model is different. Uh, it's not just a linear model. Um, but this is how uh, beta is kind of uh, estimated by a lot of the sophisticated banks and hedge funds. Uh, they'll estimate beta and sharp ratio using a Kalman filter and then they'll use that for their strategies. Uh, just because, again, beta is such a noisy quantity. So here, this is a cool plot. What does this show? Well, we're using prices for this. Um, and prices, uh, generally, you don't linear regress with prices unless you're doing something like determining the co-integration of two things, uh, which is good for pairs trading, so then you use prices. But generally, you'd want to use returns, because that's what you actually compute beta out of, is the returns. Um, so just be in, keep in mind that, that this example, we use this mainly because it looks cooler, because returns don't have as wide a distribution. Uh, but we'll show you what it looks like with returns as well. Um, so you can see here, what does this mean? Well, way back in the past, in 2012, this, the, the points were all clustered around here. And then they kind of moved up to here. And again, this is, this is the price of SPY, and this is the price of Amazon. So like the state moved up to here, and then it moved up to here. And then move to here, and you can see like there's a path it follows, right? The the beta of Amazon to SPY is changing over time because you know conditions are changing, the market's changing, Amazon's changing as a company. Um, so if you take a beta through the whole thing here, um, and again I'm ignoring these like kind of gritty Kalman filter details. Please look at them yourself if you're curious. The notebook is there. Again, notebook is on the forums currently. I'm working on permanent home for it. Uh, but it's currently on the forums. If you search Kalman filters, you should find it, and then you can clone the notebook and play with it to your heart's content. Um, but if you ran this this linear regression through here, you'd see that it's just not super great because it's not it's ignoring all of this drift. It's ignoring all of this 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 movement in the underlying data. Um, and what you really want is you want a uh, uh, linear regression that is uh, taking into account. Uh, the fact that things are moving. And so that's what a Kalman filter is doing. This Kalman filter uh, is computing the rolling beta as time goes along, taking in the new data points and throwing out the old ones, basically. Um, and you can see here, as the as time goes along, the, the, sh the slope of this line changes. And so this is your rolling beta estimate. This is much better uh, than just drawing one beta through all of this data and being like, this works. And it's also better than choosing a look back window and doing linear regression because again, like what look back window do you, do you choose? Do you choose a window that includes all of this? Do you choose a window that just includes this data? Like what's the granularity? What is what time scale does the movement occur over? You don't know. So use a Kalman filter if you can, uh, and and that that will that will kind of be a, a much better solution here. By the way, I want to say that this example in particular we actually stole from not stole, but we asked nicely, uh, and then stole from um, one of our own users. Um, Dr. Uh, Aiden O'Mahony, and I just wanted to give him a shout out here. Uh, you can click through the link to his uh, blog on this notebook, um, and he does some cool stuff on this blog uh, uh, in addition to being a user of Quantopian. So if you see him around the forums, give him a thank you for uh, letting us use his cool common filters example. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is just an example of how, like a nice visual explanation of like, Things change over time. You want to be responsive to those changes, but it's a question of like, how do you know how responsive to be? A Kalman filter answers that question for you. 
Um, and then finally here, this is just the same thing, but looking at returns, which is what you'd actually use to compute beta. Uh, and uh, this, this would be more useful for doing something like a co-integration for a pairs trading strategy is when you'd, you'd linear regress on prices. Um, but you can see here that, again, the Kalman filter is adjusting the slope of the line as time goes along. Um, and you can see kind of the general trend is that uh, it seems like the slope is getting more, more positive as time goes along, which means it's more and more uh, related to the market returns, which makes sense. It's becoming more of an established company. It's a bigger part of the market. Um, and then the other thing that's really cool is that the, the, how spread out these lines are kind of tells you how you know, much variance there is on your beta estimate. Uh, but in addition to that, like I said, the Kalman filter is actually going to give you an exact uh, window, a confidence interval, how confident it is in that beta estimate that's giving you at any point in time. So as time goes on, it'll change its beta estimate, but it will also change how confident it is in its beta estimate. And that's just incredibly valuable when you look at a beta and you can basically set like a threshold of confidence of saying, I'm not going to look at this beta unless I'm confident enough in this beta. Um, and then just like not trade. Just don't trade on the days when you're not sure. You know, that's the safe thing. And you'll find out that you'll you'll basically not make, uh, there'll be a lot of bad trades that you won't make because you're just going to not, not going to trade on those days. Of course, sometimes uh, you're going to be very confident all the time and you can say, okay, well, let's just trade. And, 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 and that works too. 